G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of the True Footy AFL Evolution 2 career. Taking on the bottom of the ladder, Port Adelaide Power. They have somehow plummeted to 18th spot since we last belted them by 10 goals at Adelaide Oval. We continue our good record against them, although now I think about it, last time they came to Perth they gave us a 9 goal belting in, uh, was it like round 5 or 6 in 2019? So the recent form against them before that wasn't so great. However, you'd have to say with us sitting first and them sitting last, we have had the better of this 2020 season, no doubt. I don't know why this game in particular, or at least this season, Port Adelaide are rated so lowly. Uh, things have really fallen out. I'm guessing Ken Hinckley's probably not the coach if they're sitting at 18 by the time, what, round 18, round 19, whatever it is, comes along. But anyway, um, Port Adelaide are a plucky side, so I am, you know, expecting a bit of a fight. Although, you know, 10 goals last time probably wouldn't really indicate that. In terms of selection, Xavier O'Neill comes in for Mark Hutchings. I think that's the only change. We're still missing Shuey, obviously. He's out for the year. Barras and Gaff are still out as well. So Jared Cameron, Xavier O'Neill, Harry Edwards, all these young guys are getting a crack. Bailey Williams is still there as our second ruck. It's a young side to take on this bottom of the ladder team in a wet clash, Khan Eagles. Drives it out of the pack. It's a turnover. Show good control. Oh, he shrugged him off. Whoever that was, they spotted up Charlie Dixon, who I do remember played fairly well in a losing effort last time we played the power. Kicked the, well, maybe he didn't kick that many goals, but it felt like he did. And he's put one through the power, get the first blood. Oof. Heartlet of all people. Takes the grab. It's a good kick to Ollie Wines. Oh, they're finding free players everywhere. Quick ball movement here from the power has caught the Eagles on the back foot. Oh, here we go. There's a certain goal. There it is. Put it through. Only wine. Nailed it. They never miss those for some reason. And the Port Adelaide have the first two. Oh, it's not a good kick. I mean, Kennedy, yes, he, he outworks his opponent. And despite not being in a great position for that kick, should put the Eagles on the board, their first goal for the game. And Elliot Yo, there's a... Oh, I don't know if that was the best choice by me. Kennedy halves the contest. They've done a lot of that spinning bullshit this quarter. Oh, don't know about that. Oh, Scotty Lysett with the, the slickness of a midfielder has picked out. I actually didn't see who that was. I don't know who number 24 for them is. We'll see shortly. Kick the goal. Kane Farrell extends Port Adelaide's lead to 11 points. Thrashes it. Takes possession. Kelly clears the congestion. Great grab there from Oscar Rowland. The Eagles have the chance here for the quick reply. Isn't too much going against this kick. We're in very good conditions. The Eagles get one back straight away. Oh, here's a certain goal. Oh, he's missed it. Justin Westhoff. Perhaps it was a slippery ball. Perhaps it was the roars of a home crowd putting him off. Oh, the Eagles have a chance here to level the scores. Perhaps undeservedly so right on quarter time. The Eagles have slowly worked their way back into the contest against a Port Adelaide side that is giving them everything at the moment. Oh, Kennedy has plucked it. Wasn't in a great position, but when Josh Kennedy has half a chance to mark a ball, he often brings it down. Oh, he's just with the burst of speed. JK shows Oscar Allen how you run into a goal at full speed. The Eagles extend the margin to 21. JK has four goals. 
Does well to keep it in play. He's kicked oh. it out on the full. Bit of a brain fart there from Hamish Hartler. This is going to require a short kick. It's going to have to be a good kick too. It, oh, it's just sort of interrupted. JK needs to work his magic. No, he doesn't. Jack Redden has a shot on goal with a careless tackle. Was it Clury? He's put it straight through. The Eagles starting to dominate this game. Oh, bit of luck here for the power. This would be their first goal since the first quarter where they looked every bit the better team. West Coast have really arm wrestled them into this position and now they've got one back finally. Looking a bit sluggish out there. Williams gets a quick kick away. Ooh, Travis Boak. It's one thing they've struggled with the power here, taking marks up the ground, but Boak has unlocked the Eagles' defence, taking a good contested grab. Charlie Dixon gets the overlap. Suddenly, Port Adelaide are only 21 points behind. That is a poor kick. Jack Darling takes a virtually uncontested mark, actually, in front of goal here. This will hurt the power. Just starting to build some resistance, and then they go and do that. That was a great kick by Redden. First wins the ball in a tackle. Wins the free kick. And then in pretty much a very standstill forward 50, he manages to find Archie with a great kick. And Archie has made it so that the Eagles now have double Port Adelaide score. Any little hint of a resistance there from Port Adelaide has been quickly snuffed out. And gifted a free kick here. Not sure what for. They can take the sting right out find a two-on-one contest. Yo, Elliot Yo finds himself unmarked. Skipper it feels like he hasn't had too much of a big day today. But this will get him on the scoreboard and the Eagles are back out to 33 points. Oh, for Adelaide. Oh. Yeah, fighting hard. He's kicked another goal. Back down to 27 points. Lewis Jenner was valiant there in defence. Power get another one here. Back to 21 points. They haven't given up despite the fairly big margin. Oh, that is a good spot up by Redden. Oh, for some reason, Bailey Williams fails to bring that. And this might hurt the Eagles. Looks like the power have some overlap here. They can drive the ball very easily into their forward 50. Oh, McGovern. Oh, I kind of feel a bit stiff there. The camera angle changed on me and he changed directions as well. Port Adelaide get another goal. And Charlie Dixon has four goals. Goodness me, are they going to score another one? They are. Now, this is momentum going crazy on AFL Evo, you have to say. But I'm up for the battle. He has five goals. We're back down to nine points. Oh, been awarded a free kick here. The Eagles probably kind of need this one, which is bizarre to say, considering what the margin was at the start of this term. It looks like Duggan's nailed it. He's had a good day today. Oh, here we go. The power. And a surge into what feels like an open goal. Oh, he's missed. That could be crucial. There's not long left. The margin is 14 points. Should be. Oh, you're joking. Tom Clury over Jared Cameron has taken a speck here. Port Adelaide have really driven a lot of... They flooded a lot of players into their forward 50 for that kick out. It was hard to spot a man free. And that might be intercepted. It just, the ball's still in play. Don't tell me, that would have been goal of the year. Holy shit, Georgiatis. Be interesting to see if we get a replay here. He's the man who missed the quick soccer. Oh, Kennedy's been tackled as he kicked it. They've paid their goal. He's just got his foot away. He's kicked five. The Eagles with a timely full stop on what will be a 20-point win, you'd think. These teams took the contest to the next level. 
Oh, I'm wrong. Port Adelaide get another shot off. Sutcliffe reduces the margin back to 14 points with 31 minutes gone. Gee, Lysak. It's been an absolute mammoth today for the power. They're going to get another shot, and this could close the margin back to 8 points, which is incredible considering what the three-quarter time siren score-wise, I mean. There we go. That is full time. We've just held off on a rampant Port Adelaide. But I nearly pulled off one of the best comebacks in AFL history. I can't remember what the margin got to. It was at least 33 points in that final term. The Eagles have a habit of fading out hard. They start averagely. They go hard in the second and third terms. And then the inevitable comeback happens. And it's cost them games. It cost them last week against the Blues. Not being able to play four quarters. Today, they got away with it playing the bottom team in a very similar clash to when the Eagles played Adelaide a number of weeks ago. But there you have it. Too good on the day, just good enough. The Eagles' defense really helped us drive from the back line, as I said before, and it looks like player of the match will be Lewis Jetta, and I agree with that. He's one of my favorite players to play with in his career. He, uh, he get, finally gets recognition for a very, very good performance with his speed and driving the ball deep forward. Charlie Dixon was gallant for the opponents, as was Sam Pal Pepper. But the Eagles get home by 14 points. So there you have it, guys. We retain top spot, of course. We are four points in front of Collingwood in second and have a game in hand as well. Looks like we're taking on the Brisbane Lions, who have plummeted to 12th, despite being, you know, looking like a contender in the first half of the season. Although we don't travel well to the Gabba in recent times. I think it's since it's about, you know, 2014, 15. I feel like every time we, or even before that, every time we go to the Gabba, it generally doesn't end well. Which is weird because we had that dominance in like 05, 06 and earlier. It's now become a bit of a bogey ground for us. And the Lions are a tough team to beat. So I'm looking forward to that contest. And I hope to see you there with us in next week's episode up at the Gabba.